What is up ladies and gentlemen, it is your boy James Eeks and today I am bringing you guys a brand new series. It's going to be a guide series called Team Compositions. This uh, YouTube series was a sub goal over on Twitch. So guys, as per usual, go check us out on Twitch. Right now we're doing a, if I don't get rank one by the end of my stream on this Friday, I'm gifting 50 subs. So come by, maybe you can grab one of those free subs if I don't hit rank one, but we're going to do that baby. But yeah, so guys, uh, what is a team composition? That is the first uh, question here for the series. And I would say in layman's terms, it is the central overarching strategy of your team, such as a rain team or a hard trick room team or a hyper offense team. And in this episode, we're going to be going over good stuffs as a team composition. And you guys are going to be very familiar with the term good stuffs after this video. And like whenever you look at your enemies six Pokemon in Team Select, you should normally instantly be able to tell their team composition. And then learning more about players as team compositions uh, is going to help you in many parts of your play. It'll definitely help you in your team building. It's going to help you in your team select, you know, what Pokemon you're going to want to bring to the match to shut down their strategy. And it's going to help you even in your in-game decisions, you know, if you're going to know what their goal is going to be with their team composition and you're going to want to shut it down. So. Yeah, if you know your opponent's goal, then that makes things that much easier for you to succeed. So guys, without further ado, let's jump right into the team compositions guide and make sure to leave a like on this video, guys. I would appreciate it a ton. It goes a long way and let's get to it. First off, we're going to ask ourselves, what is good stuffs? And good stuffs or standard, as it's been called, is definitely the most tried and true team composition since the beginning of competitive doubles Pokemon and competitive Pokemon in that matter. But good stuffs is an archetype that will always be viable. As long as there are good Pokemon in the game, good stuffs will live. Now, people might look at a good stuffs team and think there is no main strategy. There's no direct game plan such as getting up Trick Room or keeping the rain up, and I would say you are right. There isn't really a main strategy. It relies on strong Pokemon with very high base stat totals or Pokemon with amazing typing and abilities just to carry it. So they are just going with sheer strength alone uh, of just how good a Pokemon is raw, you know? And uh, they don't have a hardcore make or break strategy such as like hard trick room if they if hard trick room could never get up trick room you know they would lose all their games and you know it's just a team of six really strong pokemon and your plan when using good stuffs is pretty much to act accordingly to your opponent and you want to adjust to whatever they're going to do and you want to not allow them to execute their game plan and that's something that good stuffs does really well just because the pokemon that are on the team are all insanely strong pokemon and um the ability to play risky and have to make hard reads is often unnecessary with good stuffs just because the team is so powerful and it they work so well together that you can uh come back from sticky situations just through smart play and defensive switching and that's something that good stuffs is really good uh at doing and i'd say something that really holds good stuffs teams together is their type synergy you know if you had three super strong high base stat water types and three super strong base stat fire types obviously while those are good stuff mons the team's not going to be good because the type synergy is poor and so i think that what really holds the good stuff's core together is having a strong defensive type synergy core and that just means that good stuff teams still require a lot of care in their team building you know they can't have a huge glaring weakness or it's just going to get completely capitalized on and they're going to get swept so let's get into some examples of good stuffs teams so here's an example of a modern day vgc season 5 good stuff squad these are all strong high base stat pokemon with inherent synergies and mini strategies built in such as Tyranitar and Exodrill, the sand combo, you know, with Sand Rush. That's also a weather control put there on the team. And then with um, Incineroar, Moongus, and Tokus, we've got Fake Out, Intimidate, Follow Me, Rage Powder, with setup Pokemon, such as Swords Dance, Excadrill, uh, Dragon Dance, Dragapult. And then there's even Speed Control, one in Sandstream and Sand Rush that we just talked about, but then there is Max Airstream coming from Dragapult and 
Togekiss, and then um, Amoongus is also a form of speed control to beat out Trick Room teams, since you are so slow, and then you can spore them. So as you guys can see, this team has all the moving parts necessary to succeed. Let's get to one more example. For another example, we've got a very famous Good Stuffs team from VGC 2018. VGC 2018 was played on Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, and it was all the Pokemon allowed from the National decks except for Cover Legendaries and Mythical Pokemon. So yeah, as we can see, there is a very similar core of things shared here. Weather wasn't as big of a deal in 2018, but terrain control was extremely important, which we have in Tapu Fini. And then there's speed control coming from Zapdos' Tailwind. There's Redirection, Intimidate, and Fake Out coming from Incineroar and Amoongus to support big attackers such as Mega Metagross. And then they even do have some, time, some form of setup on these teams such as Swords Dance, Landorus, and Calm Mind Tapu Fini. And then there is the Amoongus once again for the Trick Room. And then they even ran Roar on Zapdos occasionally to have a Trick Room counter as well. So now that we've got a good kind of feel for Good Stuff's teams and we talked about how the archetype operates, and we've talked about the strengths, let's talk about its weaknesses. We've talked a ton about the strengths of Good Stuff Squad, so let's start talking about the weaknesses. Honestly, guys, the weaknesses of Good Stuff's compositions aren't exactly cut and dry, but they definitely do exist. First off, I would say it is the predictability of the squad. When you're looking at a Good Stuff's team in Team Preview, you almost always have a good idea as to what you're gonna be playing against and what to expect. When you're using a good stuff's team, you kind of forfeit the element of surprise to your opponent. While in no way does a Pokemon team need surprises or gimmicks to succeed, it is just one less element that your opponent doesn't need to worry about as much when playing against a good stuff squad. And unfortunately with our VGC 2020 example, four of the six Pokemon could potentially be holding a weakness policy, which makes it a little bit more uncertain, but that's because Dynamax is dumb. And while there is still a safe level of assumptions you can make when playing against these teams in 2020, such as Dragapult is gonna be weakness policy or life orb, or Togekiss is going to be scope lens or Bibiri Berry, see, we're still able to make relatively safe assumptions and we, we, we definitely know what, we're, what to expect when we're playing against a Good Stuff's team. And then another weekend weakness I would say about Good Stuff's teams is that you are using all insanely popular and strong Pokemon in the meta, so you should expect all of your opponents to have a game plan and answers to your team. When you are using literally the most common and strong Pokemon, those are the Pokemon that everybody is going to be building against, so you are going to you're gonna be prepared for you know your team is going to be prepared for and of course that doesn't mean too much though in the long run since at the end of the day the game comes down to who plays better you know what i mean so it, it's not that big of a weakness but it uh it's something to think about and then as stated before good stuff's teams rely heavily on defensive synergies and switching to win games and the thing is is once you've gained a good enough battle sense. Uh, I think against Good Stuff's team, certain switches and plays can actually be really predictable and you can hard punish them. Like, let's say they've got their X drill with the Swords Dance up and he's just out in the open. You know, you could totally kill him next turn. Chances are he's probably gonna protect Switch In Incineroar or protect Switch In Amoongus. And like, this kind, these kinds of plays are very telegraphed and I think that you can really punish uh, defensive play from Good Stuff's teams in that way. Defensive play, Defensive play's biggest weakness, excuse me, is being red. You know, defensive switching only works out if your opponent isn't predicting you every turn. And if your switch-ins are predicted and then punished, uh, you can lose games just like that with Good Stuff's teams. So ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, Good Stuff's teams are high base stat total Pokemon that synergize very well through typing and switching synergies but they can be predictable and they lack the element of surprise. I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode of the team composition series. I'm planning on making more of these, so I hope you guys are excited for those. So make sure to subscribe and all that good stuff. Guys, check me out on Twitch where I stream five days a week, four hours a day, every day except for Wednesday and Sunday. We're always doing something fun over there, usually Pokemon stuff, but yeah. And guys, please make sure to leave a like on this video. I would appreciate it more than you would ever know. And guys, with that, I bid you adieu. Have a great day, everybody. I will see you guys next time.